Hello everybody. Welcome back. Whoa, that's really close. This is Mandy and I finally got my Be Still My Heart set from Color Art. I'm so excited. The snow held up the mail. So I was super happy when it came in the mail today. So I figured, I'm sure some of you guys have seen the colors, but I figured I would show you the colors. I'm probably still gonna do a live, you know, depending on the weather situation here, hopefully this week. I was actually thinking about maybe tomorrow night, and tonight's Wednesday. Um, by the time I release this video, it might be Thursday already, so to, that would be like the same day as the video. So we'll see. I'll try to um, blast it on um, my Facebook group and Leslie's Facebook groups and all that, but I wanted to show you guys the colors, and then I also want to mix one color with you um, because I thought if I did this video it would be kind of a good short video and you could refer back to it if you needed to um, but if we do the live of course I'll save the replay and and release it and um, it'll of course be on my YouTube channel but I always share it to the color art Facebook groups as well and then I'll also share it on mine so hopefully we'll get the basis covered now I know Tammy has shown you the colors and I know Eric has shown some of the colors and of course Saskia does amazing product videos and so there's really really great previews available but I wanted to share with you these colors are beautiful so if you have not heard of the difference between kind of the regular primary elements and the putting on the glitz I kind of just want to touch on that briefly so regular primary elements are semi transparent meaning that light Reflect, ref, refracts, reflects through um, because they're not opaque. So they're not, um, let me show you the difference because I actually have an opaque paint right here. So when you're dealing with paint, so this is uh, Prussian Rose from Amsterdam. You see this little, this little square? That means it's opaque. That square represents like you can't see through it. So if I put this on the top of a bunch of beautiful colors, if I'm not careful how much of this I put, it'll create like a sheet of opaque color and all those beautiful colors cannot come through that unless this stretches out and has like cells and stuff like what we do with the bloom technique. So there is a logic behind opaque and translucent paints and I don't say that to overwhelm you. Um, but I say that because a lot of people work with pigments and they say, oh, the pigment's light. Well, it's not really that it's light. It's picking up what's behind it and around it, which it's designed to do so that you can get like a wealth of color. So when I always tell you guys there's tips to layering with pigments, even with semi-opaque pigments, because you kind of want to get those colors to play together so you get a wide variety in your piece instead of having one color that happens to be opaque like this drown it out so regular primary elements are semi translucent meaning they pick up the color underneath around and they reflect the color which really makes for something very beautiful because it makes them very versatile you can glaze with them you can you can use them with another color and they're not going to completely dominate and drown it out so there's still a great value for translucence, um, translucency in those colors. These are semi-opaque. So this is the second set of the putting on the glitz. They're still primary elements. They're still a dry paint system. Um, so they're different than a pigment in the sense that they're not just mica powder. They actually have paint color and pigment and mica powder. And so you're basically creating your own paint. So this is the second set um, that is semi-opaque. So the putting on the glitz, the first set um, was released toward the end of last year, and then this is the second set called Be Still My Heart. I believe there's another set coming too. You can only get this one through March 15th. So use our code if you're wanting to order it, which is Mandy1120, and save yourself 20%. You get one free. There's 12 usually in a set and the 13th one is free so pick them up while you can that's why I wanted to show them to you and explain the difference and so if you're thinking about it you'll know the difference 
Um, so these are semi-opaque. So these will have a little bit more opacity, but they're, they're not entirely opaque. Like if you were to buy this at the store, it would probably have like half of the square would be dark and half would be not colored in, meaning semi-opaque. So that it has some opacity, um, but it, it can still be, can still reflect color around it. So that's honestly really perfect for blooms and things like that. So I want to show you the colors because I don't want this video to be like the longest video ever. So this color is called Bleeding Heart. And it's so hard to pick up how beautiful it is. Let me see if I can turn off some of the, the ring light or turn on the yellow. Whoa. Kind of take off the white. So it's super beautiful. Bleeding heart. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like in the container. So this is one that's pretty close in color. There are times where they don't look very similar. And so when you look at the, the powder form, you're like, whoa, that's not the same as what I thought it would be. But mix it up. Put a little dot on the top of your lid. Makes it so much easier to figure out what you're working with. So I'm going to set this one to the side. <clears throat> There's a lot of really pretty pinks and reds in here. This one is called Pink Lemonade. So for those of you like jasmine lovers, I think of this color as being like a beautiful mix of like jasmine and like uh, pink azalea. It's like a beautiful blend of um, just a gorgeous, rich, bright, kind of punchy pink. I love it so much. So, so when I mix these, I immediately start thinking of, okay, how can I use them? What can I mix them with? Okay. And I don't know if that happens to you guys where you get like, um, you get almost like stunted because you want to use them all and you can't necessarily think of how to use them all right then. Um, so I have, I've been trying to work on doing kind of some simpler blooms. So I'm going to try a couple. I, my friend Muna challenged me to do, she challenged me on Instagram to do a green bloom. So I am going to do one. I was waiting for some of these colors to come in. This is called Splendor in the Grass. So I plan to use this one in that. And I'm going to use different shades of green. And, um, sorry, my dog's making weird noises. I'm going to use different shades of green. I'm going to use like a phthalo green. And I'm going to use um, this color. And I got a color called Black Emerald that I plan to use, um, which will, I think, add some contrast. Um, tough. Stop, sweetie. Sorry, my dog always makes noise when we start doing these things. This one is probably one of the superstars of this set. <clears throat> this is called Cupid's Crush. It is just the most gorgeous, rich red. It has a a nice shift, like almost like a violet or a blue shift. I don't even know if you can really pick that up. I wonder if I should turn my ring light like off. But just gorgeous. It's amazing. It's really hard to pick up like the true color with lighting, but Especially all of these colors, especially under resin, are just absolutely amazing. So this is called sassafras. It's a beautiful reddish um, brown, and this is uh, pretty much similar to the Cylon Cinnamon Prism Pour. So if you've been just really dying to have that color and you don't have it yet, if you get this set, you kind of have the best of both worlds until you buy it, and it is gorgeous. I love Cylon Cinnamon and I think this color is amazing. I have a lot of Cylon Cinnamon mixed up because I love it so much so I didn't mix up a ton of this one. Um, I just mixed up a little bit so I can show you guys. And then this one is called Sweet Tart. Ooh, I've just bumped the tripod, sorry. 
It's a beautiful, rich blue. And it's super sparkly. I don't know how much of that you're catching, but I'm trying to make sure you can see it. But I'm also kind of short, so I can't see what you can see. Super beautiful. And <clears throat> I mixed up most of these off camera because I figured that would be really long if I did them all with you. And this one is called Huckleberry. So for you who are boysenberry fans, or you like like the periwinkles and like the iris petals and those kinds of blue violet colors, this color is going to be a favorite. On the camera, it looks more blue. Camera's difficult with blues and purples and greens sometimes, but it's like a violet pearl blue. It's so pretty. So I'm super excited about this one. This one would look fun, I think, with the golden honey prism pour. Ooh. Or even the sassafras or the Cylon cinnamon prism pour. Um, just telling you the way my brain works. This one is a beautiful color. Of course, I said that about all of them. This is called Fireworks. And it's like a punchy red orange. It's really, really, really beautiful. So I'm already trying to think of, sometimes these beautiful oranges, I'm like fascinated by them, but I feel like, I feel like in my brain, I only make them go with like sunsets instead of like being the contrasting color and a beautiful turquoise pour or something like that. Um, so I need to expand my way of thinking. That's, that's honestly one of the reasons I look at the way other people use their colors. So I'm like, oh, I want to try that. This one is Twisted Tulip, and I love the name, and I love tulips, so look at that. It is so pretty. I don't know how well you guys can see the sparkle in these. I feel like the light's so bright that you can't see the color shift. Okay, so that one's super pretty. And then we have two more, making sure I'm... Oh no, we have three more. I have some stashed over here. Because I didn't want to overwhelm you guys when I turned on the camera and they were all like right here. So this one is one of my favorites. This one is called Nebula Star. Look at that. It's delicious. Like if a color can be delicious. It looks really blue on camera. It's like a rich greenish blue. Um, looks super blue on camera, but oh man, is it pretty. Okay, and then, did I show you guys French Kiss or was that in my head? I don't think I showed you French Kiss yet. It's right here. Ah! I don't know why I all of a sudden am dropping everything. This is French Kiss. Look at that. It's like a bright violet purple almost like a fluorescent violet super pretty super excited to use it I also have some new paints coming that my husband bought me for Valentine's Day because he loves me so I can't wait to try some of these <clears throat> I think all of uh, my fellow paint pouring friends um, can share the sentiment that your husband really loves you when he gives you paint Okay, last but certainly not least, probably one of my favorites of all of them, and this one also looks a lot more blue on the camera, um, is Be Mine. This is like a teal turquoise, but on the camera, man, I wish I could get this to show accurately. Sorry about my reach. <sighs> I don't know if that's going to make it better. Yes, much better. I'm actually going to re-show you guys all of these. Be Mine. It still looks bluer. But a lot better. I'm going to show you some of the other ones that looked kind of sketchy and different. Wow, look at the fifth thing I've dropped. What is the problem? So, I cannot say enough how big of a color art fan I am. This was French Kiss. And I've liked color art for a long time, 
but I have to say, oh, I just dropped the paint on the table. That's awesome. I have to say, with each one, I feel like Leslie outdoes herself. I don't know how she does it, but okay. Sorry, I'm just getting some paint off the table. Let me see which other one didn't really show the full effect. This is the longest video ever. And then we're going to do like one bloom and then we'll do more in subsequent videos. Cupid's Crush. Also, um, from the first set, I don't know if these are out in individual sets or individual ones yet. Um, but the first set, the first button on the glit set, you can buy the colors individually. Um, on the color art website. They're in the putting on the glitz section. So if you didn't get to buy the set and there's only a couple that you want and you really want to try them and get this new set, this was the Huckleberry. It still looks really blue. So maybe my my previewing is not going well. But anyway, they're amazing. Well, let's mix up one together. And this, I'm going to do this with the bloom recipe, but you can mix these in polypore, vivid enamel. Um, I already had my my bloom pouring medium and pardon my reach I don't want to get off the stool so I already had my pouring medium mixed up and people always ask me can I mix it in my pouring medium yes absolutely you can I also see a lot of people comment about the size of primary elements because you know this can this container may look small um, but a little bit goes a long way so I've had people message me and ask me, are, the, are they really worth the price? Do they last a long time? I think they are. I mean, I use, I do blooms more than I do anything. So I realize when you do blooms, you are um, not using a lot of paint. Um, but I, I've been using primary elements for a couple of years. I paint all the time and I just ordered a replacement of one of my pigments. None of them have run out. I haven't even run out of that one yet. I just don't want to run out. So I personally think if you use your product right, and um, I think that a little goes a long way. So even though this may be a small container, um, they're very color saturated. So the reason I wanted to mix this color with you, this one is called Twisted Lemon, which has the coolest name. So if you look at this, it looks sort of like it's almost like a green gold, but this is a good example of when the colors look different um, in the jar. So Leslie sends these cute little spoons. Um, I don't have a lot of pouring medium in here. Um, I usually put about a third of what I might put in here and then mix my pigment in, but I don't use yellow a ton, so I'm just going to make a small batch of it. So I'm going to start off with just about this much because I want to see what the color saturation is like. Now I always close the lid because all it takes is for me to get clumsy. I don't want to waste it. So you don't have to wet these with like a dispersant or anything. Your pouring medium is, is sufficient because it's an untinted paint. So it, it works great. So this is a really bright, beautiful yellow. And so you just mix it really well. Now, if I wanted to add more pouring medium, once it's good and mixed up, I can do that. Um, I'm gonna keep it just kind of highly saturated um, because I want it to be a pop of color when I do use it. But if I wanted a more muted version, I could just use less. If I want it bolder, I can use more, um, but you don't need a lot and so that's why when people ask the question about it being kind of economical, like I think so, I personally do, because you don't need a lot to make a good batch of color. So that's my two cents. I, I love using primary elements and I love that you can do so many things with them. So I did, if you saw our recent bloom where I said I finally feel like I'm getting somewhere going bigger on the six inch round, or six inch gallery wrapped. There was one part in the middle where the house paint kind of shows and I have never done glazing before. So I want to take one of my um, 
light iridescent primary elements and do a little bit of glazing and see if I can't mute the house paint a little bit. I also don't want to screw up the one painting that's gone well, <laughs> but we'll see. I'm thinking I'll use like Arctic Opal or something that's pretty, pretty calm and would go with the piece. But that's one super awesome benefit of that is you can do really versatile things. So isn't this beautiful? Woohoo! Okay, so, so that's kind of how you mix them. Super easy. I do mix them on some other videos if that's helpful for you guys, but um, usually I get a lot of questions about that. Same with prism pour. I, I mix prism pour right into my pouring medium. You don't need much because it's kind of bloom ready, but that's what I do. I don't, um, <clears throat> I don't find it difficult to, at all to use and it's so pretty. So some of these colors are starting to kind of dry on the surface I put them on. So I have a couple of tiles here. I was thinking we would do something relatively simple just so we can kind of see the color on one and then you can obviously expect a lot of color tests coming up because you know that's kind of my thing. So and you know I'm gonna to want to try like every single one. So let's get some pillow paint down and we'll do one together so this video is not too long. And um, stay tuned for the live. If you um, are not yet following our Facebook group, which is called Fluid Art Friends, and the link is in the description, please join us because I will make the announcements as to when I'm going to go live. And for lives specifically around color art, which probably the first one will be, I always share it on Leslie's group. Um, acrylic pouring with color art because we obviously want to empower people to use color art and feel like they have a great place to learn from and working with pigments and dry paint systems is a learning curve right it's not the same as just squeezing some paint out of the tube so you never want somebody to love something buy it and then not use it because they don't know what to do I do essential oils and I remember when I used to do these webinars it used to crack me up because people want to use them they want to use the oils but they don't want to learn how to use them and so they would just stop using something that was beneficial to them um, because they didn't really want to learn and that's not what we want for this we want you to have a good place to learn and use these beautiful beautiful amazing pigments. So I'm going to get off my soapbox, but that's, that's why, that's why that pouring group exists. Plus it's fun and we have contests and stuff in the color art group. So it's fun to interact with other people. Um, I don't know what to do y'all. So I mixed up some of this Persian rose color and I thought it would be cool to put it like to couple it with either one of these pink colors or Cupid's Crush. Um, so where did I put it? Let me just take action. I put it somewhere, I just mixed it up. Okay, I'm not crazy. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put this color down first. You know, I have, I have an idea and I don't know if it's going to work. So this color is Nickel Azo Gold. I had this idea when I did the Australian Red Violet and the um, Golden Honey with the Prism Pour. So this is not, oh this is so close. This is not a metallic color. When I bought it, I thought it, I thought it was. But this is, um, this color seems to play well with like a lot of colors. So let's put this color down first. We'll take some chances. So we're going to do nickel azel gold on the bottom. Um, when you're working with pigments, this is again not a rule, but it is helpful. It is helpful to start with um, 
a paint color on the bottom and finish with one right underneath your cell activator. Some people find it helpful to do, you know, paint color pigment, paint color pigment, and that's a good rule of thumb too. I don't know that you have to have like a, an ironclad rule there, but it definitely makes a difference in the structure and helps also make sure that you have um, like dimension in your cells. So I'm really tempted to mix two of these pigments in the middle just so we can play around with more than just one. Hmm, I don't know what to do. So we're gonna use Cupid's Crush for sure. And I'm using way too much paint as usual. And I'm going to add I don't know if I want to add a little bit of the pink in or if it's just going to kind of I'm torn. You guys are probably like, think off camera. You're taking too long. I think we'll add just a tiny wee wee bit of Twisted Tulip. It's not a tiny bit at all. And since I kind of went bananas, I'm just going to add a little bit more of this guy right here. Now, I'm going to do, instead of, so if you've seen some of our videos where we do like tiny white and um, I think I'm going to do, instead of doing the white underneath the cell activator, I'm going to do that Persian Rose. Um, what did I do with the lid to this? It's right here in front of my face. I feel like I should adjust. Those colors are beautiful, but I feel like the colors I had in my head would have done better with just the Cupid. But again, we're just playing around, seeing what we see. The other thing that would be kind of fun right here would be to add just a little golden honey. See how I'm not good at sticking with the one simple bloom idea? Because I start to see all the potential things that could go really well and then I don't want to limit. But it's also kind of hard to see how you could make something super beautiful out of just a couple colors. So let's see, just stirring it up a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit right there. And I don't know if this is gonna work and my head does. And then We're just going to put a tiny bit, in, in my mind I wasn't going to do a tiny bit of this, I was going to do a layer of this, but I'm just going to put a tiny circle in the middle and then do the black cell activator. I could also have done a little bit of white, but because I think that the black cell activator will react to this and create little tiny pink edges around the black cells, which I think will look cool. So we'll see. I have my little leaf blower. I also ordered some other contraption that's coming soon um, to, to try for blowing out blooms. I don't remember who told me about it, um, but it works really well because it has, has a mouth kind of shaped like this, but it's a little wider for going bigger. And I don't know, it may just become a Mandy versus the blow dryer situation, but expanding my options. So my cell activator is Australian Floetrol and Amsterdam Lamp Black. 
with about three to three and a half parts Floetrol to paint. Let's see if this works. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. This is a really long video. Okay. Oh, that didn't work right there. I need to leave it alone. This is turning out cool. Okay. My cell activator is trying to fight with me. Hold on. Okay. Used too much paint and the best part is coming off the side. I gotta get better at that. So that's one of my work-ons. You see this right here? Um, whoa. You see this? Like for one, those colors are freaking amazing together, FYI. But you see how the best part is sliding off? That's because I used too much paint, but I'm, I'm gonna get better at that. Um, but so far, my risky color choice, not too shabby, huh? So, the only place that we kind of messed up is right here, and I think we can recover. So I'm gonna try to shift some of this this way and see if I can't get some of that back. I really need to let it rest more because the cell activator is not moving. But you see how that Nicolay's of Gold looks really brown? But look what it did. Those colors on top of it, look at that. Whoa. That is amazing. Wow. That's really very amazing. And do you see the little depth of cells where the white is surrounding? That's because of that little dot we put under the black cell. It's just a little bit, but it creates this, it, create, it helps create cells and not just lacing. All right, let's spin it. It's not entirely ready yet, but I've been messing with it too much. Let's spin it. I think these are pretty amazing. And again, sorry for the long video, but I don't want to shortchange you. I've been telling you, I'm going to tell you, show you these colors when they get here. I didn't want to shortchange you. And when I do the live, I'll still share them. But this is one of my work-ons, among many other things, is not using so much paint so that probably the part that has the most dimension flies off. Now, when you go bigger, that would be okay because it's going to be the edge, but look at that. I'm probably going to lose that and that. So, and you can't leave it on and leave too much paint on because then your paint cracks. So, it's not like you can just be like, okay, spin over. Um, So that's one of the fun things about this technique is you can have practiced and practiced and practiced and you'll overcome a certain hurdle and then you're like, okay, now I need to focus on this. And it's part of the fun here, kind of learning how to, you know, go beyond the, okay, I can blow it out now. Now, how can I focus on the composition to get it where I want it? Like this part's a little shady, not shady, but doesn't have a lot of composition because my cell activator was all on this side. Because one of my other things was using too much cell activator and I would end up with these nasty veins in the middle. Which is, again is part of the kind of working on things. Um, sorry, I'm totally rambling at this point. I'm very tired. Let's see. But I think these are amazing colors together. Who would have thought? I just randomly grabbed Nickel Azo Gold. My only plan coming into this was to use that red and this Persian Rose in something and to use a black cell activator. That, that was my only plan. So that was super impressive. Look at that. Look at that. 
Look at this crazy fun color corner, whatever. I am so excited. Ooh. I am so excited. I feel like that was way outside of my normal color wheelhouse and I'm super happy about it. Okay, you can kind of tell if you can stop spinning because if you jiggle it and it doesn't kind of wiggle like jello, you're probably good. Okay, let me show you guys up close and then we'll end the super long video. But I hope that this was informative. Hope you enjoyed the the colors. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. What do you think of our color combo? That would be amazing to hear from you guys. And what suggestions do you have based on the colors I showed you? What colors do you think would look fun with some of our new colors? Help me with the inspiration. Also, what's super not cool is my spatula got stuck to the paper towel. So, I'm going to have to do some damage control in a minute. But, for now, I'm going to make it work. Okay, paper towel or not, you got to cut up. Ooh, I'm so excited about this. These are so amazing. Okay. Me, I really need to turn this ring light off. Sorry again for reaching. I'm standing on a stool, so I'm not going to be down. Okay. Before I clean up my edges, check it out. Look at that deliciousness. And the cells have so much depth and structure because of how we layered and our color choices together. I super, super love this. So leave me a comment, let me know what you think. 20% off color art using our code in the description box. And 15% uh, off Shelly's class if you haven't taken the Bloom class. Um, both of those codes are in the description box below. Uh, don't forget to join us on Facebook, Fluid Art Friends, if you're not part of Leslie's um, group two for color art it's acrylic, acrylic <laughs> pouring with color art too many words today for me anyway stay safe stay warm I'll talk to you soon